and we are going to make our way deep into not just the cobalt cave but a specific vehicle we find ourselves in a strange cargo shipment and it's been swaying like it's being uh, affected by ocean waves and hiding behind one of these large boxes is one lone Eevee. Misha, you have been in this cargo shipment on a random ship for quite some time now, at least a week. You have no idea if you've been there for much longer, but it's been quite some time. And it's been a while since you've even seen direct sunlight. So you are very tired. You are a little hungry and you are just waiting. You have just been waiting for days for this uh, ship to finally dock wherever it's going. Anywhere but where you used to be. Uh, oops, I should have run this this way. Oops. Anyway. Uh, so Misha, would you like to uh, walk around a bit or just stay? Uh, or do you feel do you feel like it's better to stay safe in your little hiding spot? Um, I guess I can go out and see what's up. I just don't want to get caught, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, occasionally you have considered this, and every time you do, you hear nearby footsteps and voices, and um, that's always kept you from stopping. But as you are contemplating this, all of a sudden, you feel a sudden lurch, and you uh, almost fall over, as all of a sudden, the ship has stopped. You don't feel, well, you feel the crashing of the waves, but it's not moving the boat. The ship has completely stopped. And you can hear footsteps and voices, um, in, indiscernible, but they seem to be moving across the, the ship and making their way outside. Would you like to follow? Uh, sure. I'd love to follow. I really want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, you uh, s slowly make your way, you know, being very stealthy and very cautious as you try to leave, uh, as you make your way um, through the cargo shipment. And as you do, as you, you uh, follow down this long hallway, and before you open the door to what seems like the exit, you hear voices. And you all look on the lower end of the display. Uh, Misha, you are able to um, overhear a conversation of uh, multiple Pokemon. Uh, one of them is like, all right, our journey is finally coming to an end. Remember everyone, the two of us will go get the treasure. You three will stay in guard outside, okay? If anything happens, anyone tries to snoop around, anyone goes, gets a little too close, you either handle them or you get to us, understand? Yes, boss. So uh, when will we, get, will we get to see the treasure? After we get it, okay? All right, so you just do what you're told and don't screw this up for either of us, okay? And they're like, yes, mans, and both. And you hear the footsteps of two, well, well, one much larger and heavier Pokemon and one that's much more on the skinnier side, uh, step off the boat and then proceed to walk away. And you then hear the others start to like, you know, uh, talk amongst themselves, like, okay. <sighs> this last gig and we can go home. Yeah, it's our big score, finally. I don't want to stay here. Can we scout things out, see if anyone's going to come? Are you sure? They're probably going to get mad at us. Well, we're trying to make sure this whole operation works. <sighs> I guess you have a point. Come on, let's go. And then you hear as everyone... Uh, as the uh, other Pokemon proceed to make their way off.
off of the, the boat. And the footsteps and voices slowly start to fade away. And you feel like you might actually be able to um, step out uh, safely. So let me put your token right here. And uh, Misha, would you like to do anything else, or are you just scanning the surroundings? Well, I've never been on a pirate ship before, it looks like. This is pretty cool. I guess I can go explore it. All right. Uh, you s All right. Um, make me a... Uh, roll me a perception check, actually. Our first skill check of the campaign. Let's go. <laughs> first roll of the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't be all ones, okay? <laughs> Alright. Ah, uh, perception. There we go. Um. Can anyone hmm. tell what song this is uh, This is and what game it's from? Uh, yeah. That is, uh, uh, ten Layla points for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, I, I, I happen to know because I was looking as you were Yeah, don't, putting... don't check the bongo thing. That's cheating. <laughs> I'm talking mainly towards the chat. Perception, I just rolled 20 correct. Um, it didn't show up in the, uh, in the chat. Unless, yeah, it's not showing up. Okay, so I just wrote the Yeah. Okay. Like, you can do it directly through the, um, the character sheet. Oh. <sighs> that is correct, the Ace Attorney 77. It is from Wind Waker, specifically, uh, Forsaken Fortress. Oh, I've, I oh I remember that one actually. Pretty good uh, stealth music, in my opinion. Um, Gossam, you're able to. Uh, are you able to make the roll or? I think so. I think I might just have to like do it manually. Yeah, if you want, I can do it on your character sheet. No, yeah, it went away, thankfully. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is uh, <laughs> the GM as Misha. Uh, that is a 14. Okay, so you're looking around a little bit. Um, you're not able to quite find anything like of note, partially because you're constantly like looking behind you to see if anyone's nearby. And um, but you do notice that this place is the ship. I mean, it's very disheveled. It's very messy, and it looks like either. These people did not keep, uh, have good upkeep from it, or whoever owns it, like, either it could have, you can only think if it was stolen from someone else and very sloppily, or whoever just gave it to them was just, did not care about it at all. Because, like, you can see, like, it is, like, you, you've never been on a ship, as you clearly stated, yeah. but you can clearly see that this is a mess. Like, you can, like, the, uh, you almost, like, you are looking up this place, you almost fall off the ladder, because it is, like, rust, like, the metal bolts are rusted, and parts of the, like, wooden, uh, planks are loose, and you can just see that everything is, like, cracked and old and just dirty. And you're just looking around, and while that's happening, we're gonna shift, uh, once again to, um... No thanks, YouTube. I do not want your uh, YouTube uh, premium ads. <laughs> and we are going to shift to a slightly more uh, chill uh, and relaxed uh, place. Uh, that is the wrong place. Whoops. Wrong uh, song. One of the elevator songs of all time. Yes. Much better. That's what I'm talking about. So, we shift our perspective to another part of Cobalt Island, 
specifically Cobalt Lake. Deep underwater uh, of this lake, there's an entire small collective of Pokemon. Just like there are of avian Pokemon living above ground, there are plenty of aquatic Pokemon uh, underwater. And one of them is Chef the Marine. And you are currently inside your little seashell home, uh, or at least it looks like a seashell. Uh, you never really ask your parents if they're actual shells from actual Pokemon, because if so, those are some massive Pokemon if they have those big shells. And uh, mm -hmm. what is what is Chef doing right now, actually? What would he be up to? Well, first, which one is the home? Is it this one? one this... In the middle. In the middle. Because his parents are special, as we'll get into explaining in a little bit. Let me just put Chef over there, then. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chef is likely just... Most likely he's just... Putting some... He's just collecting, like, bits and bits of different utensils and putting them into a little bag as he's getting ready to start the next day. Getting ready for whatever the day brings. So, uh, you do that, and, um, you decide to, uh, take a little, uh, swim out to see if there's anything, uh, outside of the house that you might want to look into, and, uh, the first person you see is your mother, uh, Regia Flo, and, uh, she's like, oh, morning, chef, how are you doing? Um, or, or at least the, uh, the blub blub equivalent, because this is underwater. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing the blub blub. Exactly. Yeah. No. 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 We'll just. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to overcomplicate it like Justice League, where it's like, ah, we need to create pockets of air in order to speak. No, it's fine. I'm. I'm doing all right. I had a very wonderful sleep, and I'm ready for the next day, oh, for wonderful. whatever it brings. Wonderful. That's always the attitude I'm looking for. Always viewing each day with a positive outlook. That's a very, that's a very admirable trait to have. Be sure not to lose it, all right? All right. And, uh, Chef, your gaze, um, slowly trails off, and you see your father, Draco Evan, just, um, he seems to just be, like, floating there, uh, like, slightly above the, uh, the, uh, floor of the lake. Uh, you know what, sure, I'll go, I'll go talk with him. He, he's probably at work doing something, but I want to talk with him. Actually, your curiosity does peak a bit, because most of the time when he's at work, he's usually on the move or talking with, or in a meeting with someone. Here, he's just, seems to be just pondering as you, uh, as you, uh, flow slowly, like, uh, you, uh, sh like, uh, Very slowly. Yeah, <laughs> you use your, your, your tendrils to just slowly, like, pretty much like how a jellyfish moves. Um, mm -hmm. just to, uh, make your way in. And, um, your father take, takes notice and is like, Oh, hello there, chef. How are you doing? Hello the I'm doing quite well, father. This is a wonderful day. Ah, that's, that's nice to, that's nice to think of. Um, I'm, I'm, what do you, forgive me. What's on your mind? A lot, actually. Just, there's, I shouldn't concern you, you're too young to know, but, you know, as my son, if there is the possibility that you take my place one day, I'll, I guess I'll let you in on a little bit of information. There's been some strange talks about some suspicious individuals nearby, on the nearby island, at least, and as leader of the Crown of Thorns Vanguard, it is my duty to keep you all safe, especially Blay. So, uh, just a lot to—it's lo just a lot to think about. But not to worry, I'll make sure that you and your mother and everyone else here is safe. Sounds great. I'm—I'm I'm gonna look around, seeing who I can help here. Maybe I can make them a nice little meal. Alright, so let me just zoom out here real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I could the, uh, talk 
There are, let's see, there's uh, two Clampels just vibing on the side, a Gorbis and a Huntail just uh, swimming about. You see a small little group of Poliwags uh, swimming up to the surface, and then you see a little family of uh, two horses, a Cedra, and a Kingdra floating nearby. Uh... I'll go over to... Oh, I'll go over to the family of sea. What did you call them? Sea kings. Horsey, Cedra, and Kingdra. I okay. promise I did not say sea king. <laughs> okay. All right. So you go over there, and the Kingdra, the eldest. Um, do you have any name ideas for for Kingdra? If not, that's fine. But um... uh. Let me think. How about we just... This one's name will be... Aquin. Alright, Aquin. So, Aquin is like, oh, good morning, chef. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for the uh, meal that you prepped for my family and I last night. It was... Wonderful. I to say I'm I'm impressed. Like I mean I know that your parents are expecting you to take over the family business of sorts, but if that doesn't end up being in, in the cards, uh, you could always make it as a pretty fantastic cook. Reminds me of the You really Oh yeah, no, you go. Sorry, Jacob. You really think so? Oh yes, of course. In fact it reminds me, uh Years back, when those uh, traveling Tatsugiri and uh, one Don Dozo came by to visit, oh man, there they could cook up quite a meal. That was unforgettable. You know, I'm wondering if we could go around uh, doing a little bit of a vacation, and if we happen to run into those guys, we'd end up um, uh, getting a bite to eat. I'm sure that. Since uh, cooking such an interest to you, you'd ha you would agree, right? Oh, I would so like to see the rest of the world again, but I need to stay here and help around. Yes, yes, that is true. So, well, who am I to lecture what your old man can and can't do? As long as you're not being forced to do terrible things, then this shouldn't be an issue. But, um, anyways... Uh, the the rest of uh, the youngins and I have to uh, be heading out. So um, keep your keep your head right. up. All right. Have a good day, Aquan. You as well. As he says, as he then uh, starts to. Uh, what's that? We'll find his word. As uh, he and the other three start to fly, uh, as he's flying float their way uh, off to the end. And uh, just as you're about to look for someone else to uh, uh, chat with, all of a sudden, you get like almost like like the underwater equivalent of swept off your feet as a Sharpedo just rushes past you. It's like, excuse me, come through. Uh, <clears throat> ah! oh, Daniel, whoa. Oh, hey, easy. What, what is it? <clears throat> Lord Evan, sir! How many times have I call, told you just call me Draco? Uh, Draco, sorry! <clears throat> uh, there's been an issue. Um, we've detected an unknown ship in the caves. What? Um, yeah, it, it just docked like a few minutes ago. We haven't seen who actually is on there, but considering that they didn't stop in any of the uh, actual shorelines they just immediately went straight into the beach uh, into the cave i mean i i don't think it, that's a good sign right and with all those rumors i've been hearing that could that could only mean trouble chef mm -hmm. would you like yes to, um would you like to uh do a little bit of a survey with your dear old dad seems like there might be some trouble and um well, getting, uh, I guess, somewhat first-hand uh, exposure to this might do some good for you. 
if if it's if I can help in any way, sure. All right, then uh, let's depart. All right, to the cave, and you all uh, start uh, floating away upwards um, uh, towards the surface of the lake, and you eventually break the surface. And um, you see uh, several aquatic Pokemon just vibing around. You see some Surskits skating on the water, some Dratini swimming, a whole bunch of Slowbros dipping their tails in in hopes that, well, they might not even realize what they're doing since their mind is in another realm of reality. <laughs> uh, but who knows, maybe a Shelder might bite their tails and then they'll become more omniscient? I don't know. Uh, but as you all surface up and start uh, swimming, uh, start trad uh, treading water, uh, Draco proceeds to swim up towards the Lapras. Is like, uh, and is like, uh, crap! Did I did I have a name for this? Uh, Jacob, would you like to come up with a name for the Lapras? <laughs> uh, sure. You don't know have what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pull a name. We're gonna say this Lapras is named uh, Prax. Prax. Yeah. P R A X. Okay. Sure. It's like Prax. Uh, I have you heard of the rumors? Oh yes. Uh, oh yes. Actually, Dan had told me that uh, he was coming to uh, find you. So then you know why you're here. Yes. Uh, please excuse me. And then, um, Prax then proceeds to... You're not able to sure tell exactly what they do, but they just sort of turn around and just stare intently at the waterfall. And then they slowly swim away as the waterfall parts. And, uh, I don't know, someone played the Zelda jingle. Da -da 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 -da. It opens to be inside. Come, chef. Let's find out who these troublemakers are. As you all swim into the cave. And then we will ship once more. Um, bring up the... Bring back the Wind Waker. Misha, you have been uh, look. You've been snooping around for a bit, and all you can find is uh, like you find a whole bunch of like scraps and just like uneaten moldy food. Um, like a few things of note is that some of these cloths seem to in like fabrics that tend to be like black or blue, and some of them have the same symbol, which is this strange circular uh, it's this strange circle with two almost bone-like prongs poking out underneath and it almost looks like an a but it it's very stylized but all of these um these all seem to have the same uh or very similar um uh what is it very similar um basically design to everything and we'll say at this point, you've like, are like starting to look around on the cave floor, uh, or actually on the, the cave uh, itself, because you have no idea where you are. You have no idea what, um, like, what island you are on. You're not even sure if you're on your own home island anymore. All you know is that you don't know anything. And you then start to hear some voices coming from up here, up in this dark, uh, uh, cave, basically. And what is, M Misha, what do you start thinking from this? And these voices start, uh, uh, to get even louder. Um, I think, 
the best thing I should do is probably hide somewhere because it might be those Pokemon from before coming back. Mm -hmm. I really don't want them to find me. Then make another uh, perception check to try to find a good hiding place. Ooh, okay. Are you having issues with the character sheet, or...? I think so. Like, is it lagging or something? You want me to do it again for you? You can. It's a bit laggy for me. I don't know why. Okay. If you need to, you mm. can just reload. Okay. But, uh, let's see. Uh, 14. Same thing. Uh, you are feeling a little stressed, uh, as these voices come, uh, start getting closer and closer. However, you are able to spot some large boulders right off to this end, and there there seems to be an opening uh, large enough for you to squeeze in. So, towards the right side of where Misha is. Okay. Alright, so you uh, proceed to hop in between them, and um, let's see, uh... Actually, yeah, roll me stealth. Why not? If you're uh, struggling with the, are you still struggling with the character sheet? I I'm know. sorry, I keep making you do all these rolls. No, when you're no, you're fine. I don't know why he's doing this. All right. Misha, the only one that's rolling. Rip. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but considering that you are already hiding the behind these large uh, boulders. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have you roll twice and I'll add them together. So that is oh. damn dang another. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is fourteen uh, my lucky? Uh, yeah, you yeah you are getting more you are getting a whole bunch of fourteens. But yeah, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um. So you do that, and just as you're able to just like like uh uh pull your whole um fluffy Eevee body. Uh, behind these boulders and are just able to like quiet your breathing.